All right, sometimes you cannot see obvious transfers of electrons in reactions, um, but nonetheless, they're redox reactions. Um, there are some redox reactions that don't necessarily involve ionic compounds, but yet the underlying principle of, of why the reaction is happening is because of transfers of electrons. So we need another way to identify redox reactions and be able to categorize them. Um, so scientists have invented, chemists have invented a bookkeeping method for assigning what we call oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers are numbers that are both positive and negative that indicate um, electron transfers. Their, their magnitude, how they change, indicates as electrons that are transferred in a reaction. They're kind of like ionic charges, but be very, very careful because they are not ionic charges. Um, if you get a chemistry instructor who's very, very particular, they'll want you to draw all of your ionic charges on your, I on your ions in the fashion of the number first, then the sign. For example, calcium is a 2 plus ion, not a plus 2, but a 2 plus. An ionic charge on calcium would be a, 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 it's, a it's a positive 2 charge, but we'd write the ion symbol as 2 plus. The oxidation number is usually written as the positive sign first and then the number, or the negative sign if it's a negative value. So the oxidation number, for example, calcium could have a, a positive 2 for his oxidation number, but that is not the same as his ionic charge. There are reasons why they're similar, but they're indicating two different things. And so if you get somebody who's a stickler for notation, They'll want the ionic charges all written as the number, then the symbol, because we write our oxidation numbers as the symbol, then the number. And we do want to write positive signs with our positive oxidation numbers. We also have oxidati oxidation numbers that are negative, and we have some species whose oxidation numbers are zero. So let's go ahead and start with that. All neutral elements have an oxidation number of zero. All elements in their elemental form are zero. For example, if I have chlorine, its oxidation number of zero is zero. If I have calcium, not the calcium ion, but the neutral calcium, his oxidation number is zero. One way to indicate the oxidation numbers is to write it above the symbol, and so I would write a zero above each of these to indicate their oxidation number is zero. The second rule that's useful to keep in mind is that if I have a monatomic ion, his oxidation number is the same as his charge. This only works if I have a monatomic ion, which means one atom at a time, in which case, if I have a calcium with a plus two charge or a two plus charge, his oxidation number, which we also, by the way, can call an oxidation state, his oxidation number, his oxidation state, is positive 2. If I have a numerical oxidation number besides 0, it is customary to put it in parentheses above the symbol. If I have sodium chloride, NaCl, that compound is made up of ions. I have the sodium ion, which is a monatomic ion with a charge of plus 1, so his oxidation number is plus 1. The chloride ion has an oxidation number of minus 1 because that's his ionic charge as the monatomic ion. All right, the next rule to keep in mind is that whenever you have a compound, it, which may be neutral or may be ionic, and once you have a group of elements together, the oxidation numbers will all add together to give you the charge on the species. The oxidation numbers will all add together, and in the case of sodium chloride, since I write this as a neutral compound, plus 1 and minus 1 all add together to give me 0. If I have something like a polyatomic ion, a group of atoms together, all with a negative 2 charge, then once I figure out the oxidation numbers of the sulfur and the oxygen, they'll all add together to give me negative 2, because that's the charge on this species and we'll talk about this one in just a second. Because the rest of the oxidation numbers, we do have some elements that always have the same oxidation number in compounds, but the rest of the oxidation numbers simply have to be figured out, determined, calculated by this rule. For example, 
if you have a hydrogen in a compound, not hydrogen by itself, but hydrogen in a compound, his oxidation number is going to be plus one. The only time that doesn't work is if hydrogen is in an ionic compound with a metal, then the metal will have the positive charge and then hydrogen's charge would be a negative one, but we're not going to run into that very much. Next, if you have an oxygen, oxygen's oxidation number in a compound is going to be a negative two, just like his ionic charge, but he doesn't have to be in an ionic compound to have the negative two oxidation number. Fluorine is going to have in a compound an oxidation number of negative one. Um, the other halogens also tend to have a negative one, just like their charges, but it doesn't have to be in an ionic compound. But usually this one is enough to get you going, although we'll, we'll, throw, we'll throw chlorine in there because you might need it. In a compound, chlorine is going to be a minus one. Um, the next thing, generally these are probably enough to get us started. Anything that is not assigned by this list has to be calculated and anything that shows up in this list is assigned in a hierarchical fashion. In other words, if I go ahead and assign hydrogen a plus one and then I've got a chlorine, he may not necessarily be a minus one because I have to make sure that the oxidation numbers of all the compound, of all the elements in the compound add together. So let's come over here to our SO4 negative two and do him. He's not the easiest to start with, but he'll work. As I go down this list, he's not an element, he's not a monatomic ion, he's a polyatomic ion. I do know that everybody has to add together to give me this negative two. If there were a hydrogen, I would give him a plus one, but there's not. There is an oxygen. This, oxidation's, this oxygen's oxidation number is a negative two. Now there are four of them. Every single oxygen has a negative two oxidation number. As I come on down this list, sulfur isn't listed, so let's call him X. What has to happen according to this rule, the green rule, is that everybody has to add together to give me a negative two. So the oxidation number of sulfur plus the four oxidation numbers of oxygen, since there's four oxygens, all have to add together to give me negative two, or X minus eight equals negative two, or X equals negative two plus eight, or X is equal to positive six. And I do want to write the plus sign. Sulfur's oxidation number in this species is a positive six. So you can assign oxidation numbers based on these rules, and they'll get you for most everything that you need. Um, if you Google oxidation number rules, you might see the rules in a slightly different fashion, but again, they're all pretty much saying the same thing. Now we can use these oxidation numbers to talk about our redox reaction and assign who's been oxidized and reduced based on the oxidation numbers. So let's look at a, a reaction that does not involve ions. For example, um, hydrogen plus oxygen form water. Nothing in this reaction is an ionic compound. So I don't have ions, I can't think of plus ions and minus ions and electrons being gained and lost to form the ions because that just doesn't apply here. To balance it, I need two oxygens, so I'll need two waters, which means I'll need two hydrogens. I only have one oxygen, uh, but I don't have to write the one. If I go through and assign oxidation numbers to everybody, that will help me see who's being oxidized and who's being reduced. Using my rules, the elements oxidation numbers are zero. And using my rules, as I go down the list, hydrogen is a plus one and oxygen is a minus two. And you'll notice that the two plus ones of hydrogen add to the negative two of oxygen to give me a zero because ox water is a neutral compound. So there are my oxidation numbers assigned. If I look at hydrogen and follow through, hydrogen's oxidation number went from a zero to a plus one. He's zero in the reactants and plus one in the products. His oxidation number increased. We say that hydrogen is oxidized. For someone whose oxidation number increases, we say that he's oxidized. If we look to see what oxygen does from here, his oxidation number is zero, to here his oxidation number is negative two. 
his oxidation number went down, it decreased, and when somebody's oxidation number goes down, we say that he's reduced. Oxygen is reduced. We can also label hydrogen as the reducing agent, and we can label oxygen as the oxidizing agent. And in fact, this is where we get this word, oxygen is an oxidizing agent. It adds oxygens to things, which is another way of looking at redox reactions. Although it doesn't always apply because oxygen isn't always involved. And so this is another way to label a redox reaction by following through on their oxidation numbers.